spirits to the subject. What are we creating with our words in the text system, the first chapter of Genesis? And I'm reading from the message translation. First this, God created the heavens and earth, all you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, a inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke light and light appeared. God saw that light was good and separated light from dark. God named the light day, he named the dark night. It was evening, it was morning, day one. God spoke sky in the middle of the water, separate water from water. God made sky. God separated the water under sky from the water above sky, and there it was. God named the sky heaven. It was evening, it was morning. Day two, God spoke, separate water beneath heaven, gather into one place, land appear, and there it was. God mm, named the land earth. He named the pool water ocean. God saw that it was. God spoke, earth spring up, grow all varieties of seed-bearing plants, every sort of fruit-bearing tree, and there it was. Earth produced green seed-bearing plants, all varieties, and fruit-bearing trees of all sorts. God saw that it was good. It was evening, it was morning, day three. God spoke, lights come out, shine in heaven, skies. <laughs> Day from night marks seasons and days and years, lights in heaven sky to give light to earth. And there it was. God made two big lights, the larger to take charge of day, the smaller to be in charge of night, and God made the stars. God placed them in the heavenly sky to light up earth and oversee day and night, to separate light and dark. God saw that it was good. It was evening. It was morning. Day four. God spoke swarm motion with fish and all sea life birds fly through the sky over earth. God created the huge whales, all the swarm of life in the waters, and every kind of species of flying birds. God saw that it was good. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce. Fill ocean, birds, reproduce on earth. It was evening, it was morning. Day five. God spoke, earth, generate life. Every sort and kind, cattle and reptiles and wild animals, all kinds. And there it was, wild animals of every kind, cattle of all kinds, every sort of reptile and bug. God saw that it was good. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the mm -hmm. fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of earth. God created human beings. God created them God-like reflecting God's nature. God created them male and female. God blessed them, prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge, be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. And God said, I've given you every sort of seed bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit bearing tree, given them to you for food to all animals and all birds, everything that moves and breathes, I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked over everything God made. It was so good, so very good. It was evening, it was morning, day six. What are we creating with our words? You and I are God's creation, are we not? We are here because it is God who has made us and not we ourselves. 
And when God created us and everything around us, God said, it is good. It only became not good when sin entered the world. But God said at the very beginning that you and I, the human beings, are to reflect God. Now, why do I read all of that passage? What does it make? What difference does it make to you and I? You and I, who are God bearers, we bear the image of God. And since we bear the image of God, we have some abilities that we share with God. Now, it's only a little bit of something, but it's all we got. And it's the best we have. And it's what we're supposed to live for the lit use for the living of our days. And what we have is the ability to co create with God. Now, personally, I think God is rather crazy because I wouldn't trust human beings to do a doggone thing. Come on, preach. And I am. <laughs> but God has given you and I the ability to co create. You and I can co create with the God of the universe. Think about it, y'all. Isn't that crazy? But you and I have that ability. God put it in you, and God put it in me. We have the ability to co-create with God. Now, how does God create? God speaks. He spoke, and it was so. And you and I, who have the face of God, the image of God stamped on us in our DNA, down in our sanctified souls, when we speak, Stuff happens too. Thank you. When we speak, things are created. Now, we think, oh, it can't be the Colossus of the universe. It can't be stars and moons. It can't be Jupiter and Mars. But when you and I speak, something is created. And what we are creating is more close to home and perhaps more important than Jupiter and Mars. When you and I speak, when we are co creating, in this world, whatever we speak can be reality. Have you ever listened to yourself talking to yourself? We, we done that. We have a running conversation in our heads. Mm -hmm. um, some people, unfortunately, are aware of it, but everybody does, and you really ought to listen to it because it's a good monitoring device. How you speak to yourself in your head is how you speak to everybody else. Let me point this out to you. If you tell yourself, oh, I'm nothing, I'm no good, I just can't do that. If you're talking to yourself that way, if I'm talking to myself this way, how am I not going to be talking the same way about other people? What I'm saying to myself, what you're saying to yourself becomes manifest, which is to say what's essentially in our heads, if we say it long enough, will start becoming physical reality all around us. And the real kicker with this is that what becomes reality for you and me doesn't just become reality for us. It becomes reality for everybody around us. Remember the Peanuts character, Pigpen, yeah. with that cloud of dirt around him? You and I have a cloud around us. It could be a cloud of dirt or it could be a cloud of light, a cloud of darkness or a cloud of light. If you and I are the kind of people who are saying, what's so good about today when folks say, oh, isn't it a lovely day? What's so good about it? I'm sick and tired of all these people. I'm sick and tired of this. I don't like you. I don't like him. I don't like any of them. And all of a sudden, the cloud around us becomes dark. And I don't know about you, but I know a few folks that I just don't want to be around. For that very reason, because they're in cloud, enclosed in this cloud of negativity. And may I tell you something? People, if that happens to be you, I don't know if it is. I'm just saying what I'm saying. <laughs> if you live in a cloud of negativity, when you look up and you don't find anybody there, it's because nobody <laughs> wants to be in your cloud with you. That's right. yes. Now, good folk will try. You know, we'll give you a try. But after time, we go, you know what? Maria, this is too hard. I wish him well and I'm praying. But I'm going to have 
to go. And you know what they say, you know, you don't have to leave, you don't have to go home, but you got to leave here. That's what we say in our spirit. You dog cloud person, you don't have to go home, but you got to leave away from here because I can't take it. And we try, we you know, human beings have a habit of trying to be good for and by and large the most part. But sometimes uh, your pig pen self is just too much for me. And I'm going to give you a world. And I'm going to pray for you always. I'm going to pray without ceasing. But I may make the decision that I am not going to be around you because what you create is darkness and not light. And don't you know that what you think and what you say can become manifest in the flesh? Because we have the power to co-create with God. It is God given what we think, what we say, and just like God speaks, if we speak it long enough, loud enough, convincingly enough to ourselves and other people, it will become reality. Just as God said, let there be light. And there was. If you say everybody's mean, nasty, brutish, and life is short, that's what it's going to be for you. That's what it's going to be for me. But if we can say, God, I'm going to trust you. And we say with Job, as the sister quoted out this morning, I, was, I thought you were going to say the other quote, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. Do you hear the faith in that? We are not guaranteed that we're going to get through a day unscathed. We're not even guaranteed that we're going to get through a day alive. That's not the promise of God. The promise is whatever you and I go through, God says, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And whatever you must go through, I will be there with you. I will not leave you alone. It breaks my heart that that young woman died in the way she did and so early. And there's no getting around the fact that that's a tragedy. But you understand that God did not leave that child by herself. God was right there with her. Now, I'm not God, so I don't understand all God's plans. But I think that the baby did what she came to earth to do. Because all of us come with an assignment. And her assignment, some part thereof, had to be to stand witness to goodness, to stand witness to light. Charlottesville, Virginia on the 12th of August 2017. And that may have been all that she was supposed to do on this earth. I'm sure because you know we don't get to leave until our tasks are completed. We don't get to leave until we've done what God sent us to do. And what God has sent you and what God has sent me to do is to speak life out of death. Yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, me. We are tasked to do those kinds of great things. We speak life out of death and light out of darkness because of the God who is in us, because of what God has put in us from the beginning. We have the power to say, light be gone. Come forth. Darkness be gone. Death, where is your victory? Victory, your victory, oh, death, where is your sting? God has given you and I that power. Don't keep walking around and not understanding what kind of power you have. Now, we can dissipate it. We can decide that we're going to live in darkness and be crabs all crapped up and, and in this little fetal position and, and nobody bother me and I'm just going to be here and shut up and get out of my face. You can live like that if you want to, but <laughs> what fun is that? Come on. Yes. What joy is there in that? Yes. What hope is there in that? When we can be the bearers of life, we can be the children of God, created in God's own image, with the power to say, let there <clears throat> and there will be. Hmm. I only know 
one great thing. Jesus Christ. It's all Yes. That's all I know. That's all I know. But out of that knowledge, I can go anywhere God sends me. I can do anything God asks me to do. Look at me, I'm not much. What you see is what's left of me after a stroke. And you're not much either. But we are God's people. And you and I and everyone who will put their hands to the plow, who will be who God means them to be, who will become, because the truth is you and I are becoming, aren't we? Yes. Uh, thank God I'm not what I used to be, but praise God, I am more than I used to be. And every day I get a little better when I keep my hand in Jesus's. And yours, if you are the same way. We are on a journey. We are becoming. And we are human beings, so we are built for a struggle. We may not like it very well, but we are built for this. We're built for breathing air in and out of our lungs. We're built for heart beating. We're built to be in the time-space continuum. We're built to know that we come into the world and we leave the world. And that we, when we come to know God, we understand that we came from somewhere and we are going somewhere. Amen. And no matter how dark the days look, no matter how confusing the, the times are, our touchstone <coughs> is God, our God who says, let there be light. Yeah. Now this is the paradoxical thing about God, and once we start walking with God, we begin to recognize the paradox of existence. Paradoxes are two things that are opposite and that are yet at the same time true. We can say, Lord, I'm in the middle of a storm, but I'm going to praise you. Lord, I'm in a battle, and it looks like I'm losing this battle. In fact, that baby on yesterday lost her battle to stay alive, but there is still and yet an enduring truth. Her body died and went home to God, but her spirit did go home to God. So her body ended, but she did not. She did not end. And I want to tell her mama and her daddy who want their baby with them, go ahead and grieve because you don't have her the way you used to have her. And we're used to having flesh and blood. We're used to being able to call each other and hold each other and hug each other and look into each other's eyes and hear each other's voices. They don't have her that way anymore. And that's a shock. They are grieving, but she has died once and she will never die again. My Lord. Because yes. she has entered into eternity. Brother Kim is here because his baby is playing piano. And he didn't know what the situation would be. And what a good daddy does is he makes sure his child is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. And so he sits there among us today because his baby's at our piano. And he's a good example. You know, that's preach on you, did you? He's a good example for what a father does. Now, not only he's a good example of what a father does, he's a good example of what brothers and sisters in Christ must do for each other. Amen. I don't have to know you. I don't even have to approve of you to understand that we are human beings together. We're in the struggle together. And we can say together, let there be. In the middle of a war, race or otherwise, people of goodwill, folk who know the Lord, know the power of prayer, when everybody else is saying, we're going to fight, we're going to fight, we can say, let there be peace. And like Bonhoeffer, we're not talking about the cheap grace. Because see, somebody always pays for peace. You may not have paid for the price, but somebody pays for preach, peace. The soldiers the women and women who are on our battlefields, they paid for it with their blood, sweat, and tears. So I didn't have to go, but somebody went. 
It's the same thing with Jesus. We couldn't pay for salvation, but don't you know it's not free? We experience the freedom of salvation, but Jesus Christ paid the price. Yes, he did. On Calvary, way back on Calvary, when he was hanged on a tree and hung his head and died and cried out, Father, it is finished. I did what you came, sent me to the earth to bring to life. I have opened the door for salvation for all people, for all time, and all places. Ah, man. No. Salvation was not free. It's been paid for. You and I have been bought and paid for by the blood of the Christ. And that same God who spoke everything in creation, it blows my mind when I think it as if God saying, let there be, let there be. God also knew that you and I, puny human beings that we are, had the capacity and would stand up on our two feet and say, no, God, I don't think I'm going to do what you would like me to do. I'm going to do something else. Because I feel like it, and because I can. And God created us knowing full well that we were going to turn on God and act the fool. God knew that. Before God ever created us, before God ever breathed the breath of life into to the, the dirt of the ground that became human <laughs> beings, God said, see, they're going to mess up. No, they're going to mess up. They're going to mess up. Not a question of when, only a matter, not a question of if, only a matter of when. Understand, we who sit in these comfortable chairs and think, oh, I wouldn't have behaved that way. If Adam and Eve hadn't done it, you or I would have, or somebody we know would have done it. Okay? We were going to act a fool and get kicked out of the garden. Paradise. We were, we were, we were. And since God knew that about us, God said, we know, we can't even make them until we got a plan to save them from themselves. Mm, nice, nice. We got to save them from themselves. And the devil will want to know, well, if you got to do all that, why make them in the first place? <laughs> and God said, because I want to. <laughs> Because I want to share eternity with somebody. I want to share this glory. I want to share this life forever with beings who are stamped in my own image. And so, yes, I'm going to make them. And yes, I'm going to give them a way out of hell. Well, well, preach. And so before we were ever formed, before we were ever formed from the dust of the earth, God said, before I breathe on them, Let's put this plan of salvation into place. Jesus, at the right time, you got to go down, 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 down through the generations of human flesh. And I want you to be born in the womb of Mary. And I want you to just stay like a human baby for nine months, and then I want you to come down Mary's birth canal and be born. And they're not going to recognize you because you're not coming the way they think. You're coming. You're gonna not. You're not gonna look anything like a king. You're not gonna have any riches and wealth and accoutrement. You're just gonna be a poor Galilean boy. And so, if they don't have the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and the hearts to understand, they're gonna miss you. Mm. But you come. I'm gonna send you because they're gonna need you because you are the light the way and the truth and they won't be able to get back to heaven without you. Praise him. Praise him. <coughs> yeah. Give him glory. Give him glory, Pastor Brenda. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So God spoke and everything that is became. And at the right time, you and I were born so now we are here in our time and in our turn to speak with our God-imaged selves, with mouths 
that can bring, sing praises or curses and make a difference in the world or not. You and I have the chance to be lights in the world. We can be salt in the earth, for well, that is why we were made. That is why we were made. You have an assignment. Do you know your assignment? Yeah. What are you waiting on? If you just ask God, you'll understand what your assignment is. Yeah. And when you understand what it is, then get to doing it. Because people need to know that there is light in the darkness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. There is Thank good you. in the evil that surrounds. They need to know that there is life in the midst of death. Though we're surrounded by darkness and evil and death, we are further encompassed by God in us, around us, under us, over us, for us, through us. So what are we creating with our words? Are we creating heaven? Are we creating peace, shalom? The, our Jewish brothers and sisters say shalom, and it means not just the absence of conflict, it means something even greater than that. It means the space to be and become in. Are we creating shalom? The space to be and become in. We've got the power to do it, but will we do it? Or will we be pushed to the edge of, um, of annihilation because you can't get past the fact that somebody's yellow or somebody's red or somebody's black or somebody's white or somebody is purple. Will we do it? Because that's what we're meant to do. Will we be foolish and all die together? God said, let there be. And whatever God says it, it is. And we who are God's creatures who are co-creators with God have the power to say, let there be. Let there be what? Life. Light out of darkness. Life out of death. Joy out of sadness. Which doesn't mean that those things don't exist and that they won't keep on carrying on. Kept on we won't have to keep dealing with them. But each time it comes up, each time death arises, each time darkness seems to prevail, each time there's no joy and we can't hear nobody pray, we say with God, let there be light. Open and maybe 